Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is a shop update video, it's not instructional. I don't wanna be misleading, so if you're interested in the, what's going on in the shop, here's what's going on. Um, I'm frustrated with the shop, and I can't believe I'm saying that because coming from the New York basement or the apartment, um, this shop is incredible, uh, but I can't keep it clean. Uh, and it's, it's really frustrating me. I had four guys come and myself about a, six weeks ago, and we tore the shop apart. We didn't move any of the big machines, but anything else, tables, shelves, anything got taken out, got hosed down, wiped down. We scrubbed the walls, we scrubbed the floor, we shot backed, we dusted. Um, and you know, six weeks later, it's a mess again. I, I can't, it's a dust thing really. And I don't, I'd love to hear if you have any suggestions. I'm not sure it's solvable because we're walking in with, with muddy boots. The door has to be open sometimes. Uh, we're welding in here without you know, any sort of a demising wall. We're grinding in here. We've got the plasma. We run a wood stove that's dirty. We're hauling in wood, which creates dust. Um, and, then, and then Grandpa and I, I, it's like against my code to speak anything frustrating against him because he's been such a role model and help. Um, but it's frustrating because he comes in here and he'll decide he wants to cut up a bunch of wood on a table saw and uh, God bless him, he's 89 and he's, you know, he comes over with this piece of cherry and he's found a, a burl or curly part to it and he's so proud of it and he's sanding it down and thinking of what he's gonna do with it and it's amazing. On the flip side, I'm trying to run my business and so it's that tug and pull of here's like my idol and role model um, but I also am thinking, no, I've got to put myself first because at the end of the day, I need to uh, put food on the table and I need to grow this business and I won't be apologetic about that. Um, the ironic thing is it's technically my father's building. Um, I pay, you know, he, the rent goes to him. Uh, Grandpa doesn't pay rent, of course, but, um, and I, my rent is heavily subsidized. I, I don't mean it in that I have a legitimate market rate lease here. It's a very much a favored deal. So it's kind of torn because it's like, I'm so grateful, but I'm frustrated. Um, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to build a new building. That's, that's not gonna happen. I don't even think it's gonna happen this summer um, for reasons I'll get into later in, you know, in a future video. But I'd love some help, folks. I, and the answer is no. Grandpa ain't gonna put a dust collection machine on his table saw or any machine, sorry. Um, and there is, I'm not gonna put or some crazy amount of money into you know, ducting with a forced air furnace. So I think I'm just kind of stuck with what I got. The truth is it's okay, it just frustrates me. You know, I can't keep surface plates clean. It's, it's just dirty, it's messy. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I'd like to move the air compressor outside come springtime. I'm curious, anyone else do this where they put the air compressor outside but in cold weather? I mean, today it's 11 degrees. That's unusually cold, but I'm wondering, do I need to have a magnetic heater on that? Maybe something I just need to research. I bought the Tormach lathe. If you watch the open house video, you'll uh, see me mention it. I actually technically haven't clicked purchase on it, but in the next day or two, uh, I'm gonna buy the turret option and I'm just trying to figure out if they uh, are gonna offer like a tooling package for it or whether I need to go buy them ad hoc. So super excited about that. It's at this point, equipment is is a tool to me and less of a, I mean, I well, I'm still really excited, but I remember when I bought uh, this guy, I mean, it was, you know, I was a kid in the candy store. It was life changing. Now it's more, okay, it's a business, it's a business expense, um, but it'll be great and it'll be a lot of, uh, great videos to come as well as a great machine for our shop. Um, kudos to everyone who's beaten me up on this, including uh, Brad over at Tactical Key Change. I finally decided to buy a tool changer for the mill and uh, I'll talk more about it when I get it up and running. It just makes sense. I'm actually really excited for it. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for it. So that's that'll happen here. Um, we're getting a Harbor Freight in town, which is scary, but I'm actually excited because I'm gonna try buying one of their concrete mixers and using it for deburring and tumbling. Um, I'm a big fan of aut automation on post-machining post processes, and so whether it's, it's a rough tumble or just a walnut shell, I think that'll actually be really helpful for plasma parts as well. And um, yeah, we've been really busy lately. Uh, been doing a lot of the one-off uh, work that we do for, for some of the uh, school and universities that I enjoy, and, it, and, it's, and it's good work. Uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, Glock machining on the RMRs. It's a Trigicon reflex site, and that kind of took off, I'll be honest with you. What's interesting is that it just leaked that Glock is releasing a few 
RMR ready pistols. Uh, I think it's supposed to get released at SHOT Show this year. So it'll be funny, you know, that might eradicate that business, but it also looks like they're only gonna do it on a few models. So the folks with, with 17s or 19s or models that they don't offer, maybe that'll continue on. And uh, there's also a lot of folks who may want to modify an existing uh, pistol rather than modify, or excuse me, purchase a new one. So um, that's been a good business. We've been, uh, we've had a lot of interest from folks who want to get their RMRs machine to do side cuts and, and slide cuts and fancy stuff on the Glocks. That was never really my thing. Um, and I kind of said, I said no to it because I'm not a gunsmith and I was worried about um, what's appropriate machining you can do to slide and not risk its structural integrity. Um, but then I understand if someone's going to send out their slide to get machined, they want to have it all machined at once because it makes sense and especially makes sense if you're going to have it uh, refinished. Uh, we actually started doing Cerakote as well, which has gone great. And so uh, I've been experimenting with a few designs and I may start doing that. I, um, I'm not sure. Well, I think we'll, we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. Otherwise, um, we've got some great Wednesday widgets coming up. I want to bang through a bunch more of the Choose Your Own Adventure videos. They're going to be great. And then the next one I'm really excited for is, again, I got that Form 1 approved from the ATF. So we're going to do a uh, DIY 22 suppressor. should be a great video because we're going to be um, it's going to be a bunch of different machined parts. And that's not something I always do on my videos and uh, it'll be great it'll be a lengthy uh, series because we're going to go through a lot of the cad and it's going to take a while we're going to try to slip roll some sheet metal as uh as some clamshells on the suppressor itself so good stuff to come folks um just want to give you a quick update take care see you soon